curious. I'll direct you to U.S. Annotated Code, Title 13, Section 7, Subsection 2, and it talks about the fact that they can ask you anything the Secretary of Commerce can come up with, anything. However, if you refuse to answer those questions, they'll charge you $100 maximum fine. So I thought, okay, I'll not eat lunch for 20 days, $5 a day, and I'll just give them that $100. But in fact, the law states that you would have to answer their questions. However, if you answer falsely, it's a $500 fine. So there, there's the code. And I agree, we shouldn't answer these questions, but we need to get that law changed because it's on the road. And that's a lot of stuff that's out there like that. But if everyone right. refused to answer, some they level of civil disobedience. To I agree. Go after everybody. I agree. That's what it's saying. Look it up. Title 13. Look the, it up. Again, I, I'm not an attorney, and I'm not trying to be an attorney. The Constitution says a certain thing. The government can. all that information on income tax. That's right. But but there are some people who don't file income tax. I know you find it hard to believe that there are people that are trying no, to. No, I believe it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, I get close so they can hear you. In 1980, I was a uh, census taker. Okay. Uh, I was. It was in the summer, and what it is is the people that don't fill them out get a census taker, not a dollar. If you don't fill it out and mail it back, they send somebody out to that address. And what they told us is not real bad, but that was 1980. They said if they refuse to answer, just try to make a note of how many people they know. That's all they want to know. That was the final thing. Some people get long forms, like this lady did, and you get a short form. And the long form, they'll, they'll say just grab one out of the car, have them try to fill it out. If they don't want to fill it out, I know how many people live it. That's all they want. But that was 1980. Everybody think real hard. I find it interesting after having questions that they actually asked that they want to know the GPS coordinates of your home. I can find no reason why the government should have the GPS coordinates of my home. And if I choose to not have running water, I don't think it's use the language. I don't think it's any of their damn business. If I choose to grow carrots in my backyard instead of grass, it's nobody's business but mine. This country is supposed to be a free country. And yes, there's a law. And the law says you have to do certain things. So maybe I'm saying that I choose to break the law. I'm not saying that you should, and I'm not saying that I would. But the Congress passes laws all the time that are not constitutional. Right. Uh, there was a congressman back to start this health care thing that was asked a question about what do you think about the constitutionality of the health care bill is, and he said straight out, we pass non unconstitutional bills all the time. His wife got sentenced to three years in prison today. So, and, and I'm not trying to tie John Conyers to what his wife did or whether she's guilty or innocent. But John Conyers admitted, and John Conyers is not the only one. Anybody, I come from the north of Virginia. I know you can't tell by the way I talk. I come from the north of Virginia, and I'll tell you that the north makes the south look pure and clean. Okay? There's more corruption there than you could think of here. So this is nice. It's nice here. But the bottom line is anytime you get two people in one dollar, one person's going to want more than the other. And anytime you send somebody to Washington and you don't stand on his back and watch what he does, they are going to figure out a way to make money and they forget about you real quick. But that's off subject of the, of the census. So any other quick? Oh, I get this. You can talk all night and I get this. Okay. <laughs> Okay, David, turn your mic on, David. You're never going to over speak me while you have your mic on. Okay. Uh, what we want to do now is just uh, just have some discussion with you guys about things that are on your mind. I know that I want to have a couple of folks just say a few things about what's going on. Uh, you know, we have some strategies. I think it's been shared with us as to as to uh, grow our membership as to uh, encourage that membership and to educate that membership. And we, we, we're trying to do a little bit of educating tonight, and uh, we, we plan some added education as we go forward. Now, Robert's been working on a lot of that, and he's going to begin 
on a monthly basis having some education and then some other events. And I'd just like for Robert just to speak to that for just a second if he would. It'll just take a few minutes. Um, what we're going to try to do is basically support what she's doing. Um, one of the biggest problems in America today is people do not know how the government works. That's why the government gets away with all that they do. If you, uh, it's always amazes me when I pull my little constitution out. How out of this this oh, excuse me out of this little list of thoughts that were developed by a bunch of really sharp people 240 years ago. Uh, how a snail darter got <laughs> priority over somebody who wants to fish in a river. Yeah. Okay. How a snail daughter, that's a little fish in some little stream somewhere that we probably spent who knows how many billions of dollars to protect. There's a hydroelectric plant spark. You can't put a dam on it because we've got a snail daughter. Uh, that's an example. But what we want to do uh, is spend time on the Constitution. Is what, and we're, we've got a plan, this little book, the 5,000 year lead. It's going to be our textbook. I want everybody to have one. And uh, back in another life, I used to be a teacher. And uh, we're going to treat it like a classroom. You know, we might have a test. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 